Gentlemen, please welcome the founder and host of BuddyCast, Nick Sorensen. Welcome to episode 310 of everybody's favorite show, BuddyCast. I'm your host, Nick Sorensen. Thank you for joining us on a wonderful episode today. I'm here with my new buddy, Officer Trooper Arrington. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for joining us today. I've always wanted to talk to a state police officer, learn about the day-to-day life, what you what you do in your career, you know, what makes you so passionate about helping others. So I think it's just oh sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just think I think uh being a police officer is just a calling. If you really um have that calling to go out and serve the community and and uh try to make a difference in life, this is the job for you. Mm-hmm. So that brings up my first question. What inspired you to seek a career as an officer? Well, my story is slightly different. I was in the military mm. and I was getting out. Of, I was getting out of the military and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And, and I was approached by a, a police officer that asked, you know, if I ever thought about being a policeman. And, and truthfully, no, I really didn't hadn't thought about it. But I uh, the more I started looking into it and I know. At the time, I was uh, I liked some of the things that I did in the military. I liked the environment. I liked the camaraderie, and it transformed over into the police uh, department. So I decided to uh, go into law enforcement. Uh, wonderful! Thank you for your service, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> so now that you are a police officer, what gives you the motivation to wake up every morning and go? I get to go to work today. Okay, well, um, there's two different things. One, I really do like helping people. I like uh, I like to make a difference in my community. And the other thing, I truly enjoy what I do for a living. I, not only because there's so many different aspects of, of policing, and now in the later part of my career, I do a lot more community service, working with people, trying to help out other charities, talking to politicians, explaining why, you know, the need for police officers. So I really like that. Wonderful. And you're also a recruiter for Pennsylvania State Police. What does, yes, your, I'm one day-to-day, of the, what does your day-to-day job entail? Yes, I'm one of the I'm on the Western recruitment team for the Pennsylvania State Police. And that uh, basically entails uh, going out and talking to people that are interested in becoming a police officer, trying to give um, tell them all the uh, opportunities they, they have with the Pennsylvania State Police, because a lot of times there's misconceptions about police work or what the state police may do. So I try to uh, convey as much information as possible. And then we also help the applicants navigate through the hiring process. And what that means is we have several steps in our hiring process. You have to take a written exam, an oral exam, uh, a polygraph test, uh, background investigation, psychological test, medical exam, physical fitness exams. And so it becomes sometimes because it's so complex, it may be a little confusing. So we try to uh, help it uh, go as smoothly as possible with the applicants. Hmm. Nice. You mentioned some misconceptions earlier. What are some common misconceptions that you've heard throughout your career? Well, um, <laughs> some of like a lot of the misconceptions, like I said, are wrong because they, you know, if you tell someone you work for the state police, they're going to say, oh, well, you just sit on 90 and write tickets or sit on the interstate and write tickets. Or I get all, I get a lot of questions. Sometimes people ask like, oh, well, what's the quota? There are no quotas. Quotas are illegal. So I have to, I explain a lot of things that we do that, you know, being with the Pennsylvania State Police, we're the primary law enforcement agency for the state, and we are a full service police agency. So we basically have everything that you see on TV. Uh, we have a branch of that or a division of that uh, service in the police department in our department. Hmm. In a comical sense, what do you think the funniest misconception you've ever heard? Like, what do you think? Like, um, the probably that we eat donuts is probably the funniest thing because. If you know anything about the state police, we're like 
extremely into physical fitness. Our academy is extremely physically hard. So it's, it's funny, like everybody enjoys a donut once in a while, but it's not uh, something that we consume 24 <laughs> seven. Mm -hmm. So do you recall when you went through, you mentioned it earlier about you going, you know, being recruited by an officer. Do you remember going through the process yourself? Yes, I do. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Like what, what it was like for you? Well, going through the process, our, I mean, at the time going through the process, it takes about a year to get hired with the Pennsylvania State Police. And the time when I was getting coming on, we had a large number of applicants. So it was very, um, uh, it just, I want to, I don't want to say trying, but because the process is so long, it's good to have that recruiter there that you can call and touch base with and say, you know, when, do you know when I'm going to start my background investigation? Do you know when we're going to start our medical evaluation, things like that. So they can give you, you know, some insight into it. And you can also, because it's the long process, you see the light into the tunnel because you can see, okay, this step is done. This step is done. And it makes it a little easier. Nice. So when you're out there recruiting, when you're at job fairs, when you're out in the community, what are some qualities you look for for candidates? Well, I look for someone that's like highly motivated, uh, can work well, you know, independently because obviously our supervisors aren't exactly with us all the time because they're not in the car with you. So you have to be able to work independently, be motivated to go out and do the job without someone, you know, telling you. Um, also, I look at you know, how well do you, you know, do you follow orders or how structured are you? If you can be able to, uh, you know, because we're a paramilitary organization. So we want to make sure that you can adapt to this department. Wonderful. Wonderful. So now what are your hopes and dreams when it comes to Pennsylvania State Police, when it comes to the future of the department? Um, I think some of the things that we would like to get out of it is to have the best possible department we can have. Uh, right now, we're the largest accredited state police agency in the country. We want to continue to, to improve on that. Uh, and part of improving on that, we want to increase our diversity that not only with minorities, but with women also. We want to have a police force that is reflective of the Commonwealth. Nice. Nice. So what about, can you give us, from your time as an officer, give us a feel-good story about the time you helped someone and it really made an impact on them? Um. Where there's, a, there's a couple that were, I think, that leave a lasting impression. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't, I mean, it, it, sometimes it's the small things. Like I uh, I remember back when I was on patrol driving around and I, I happened to see a, a lady pulled over to the side of the road and she was and she was kind of frantic. I didn't really know what she was doing. So I stopped and I just asked her, you know, ma'am, is there anything I can do? And she was having a hard time putting her grandchild's car seat into her car. And so that's one of the um, duties of a Pennsylvania state police trooper is learning how to install correctly install car seats. So I put the car seat in, in, in the car. It wasn't to me, it wasn't really a big deal. I just, you know, I, I fastened it into the back seat, which she was able to put her grandson in and stuff like that. And, you know, I just wished her a, a good day and I took off on my way. Well, three years later, um, I was uh, at, at our barracks, we have a gas station. So, I pull in to get gas and I see they were doing a car, our car seat uh, installation day. So there's a line of cars going in, getting car seats. And I walked over and I said, hi. And um, this lady comes over to me and goes, hey, do you remember me? And I'm like, not really. And she explains that she's the grandmother from three years ago. And she was there with her daughter getting another car seat put in. And she was just telling me how grateful she was that I stopped that day. That just made me feel good that I, something that took me maybe, you know, five minutes and was, seemingly meaningless made all the difference in the world to her that... another story was i had a uh i had a, a call for a domestic and a domestic is a family dispute mm -hmm. so i got a call for a, a, a domestic dispute and i went to the house and it was uh it was a dispute between a dad and a 13 year old boy and honestly the dispute was about the it was uh one in the afternoon the the 13 year old boy was refusing to get dressed. <laughs> like he was like just lounging. He was just lounging in his underwear and t-shirt and stuff like that. And so basically I said, you know, you have to get up, get dressed, listen to your parents, do what their parents tell you to do. Uh, again, probably four years later, I'm driving through the, the township and I see these kids and they're, they're sitting at a gazebo and they have skateboards and stuff like that. And I normally stop and just talk, you know, see, Hey, what's going on? Stuff like that. 
And the one kid, he's 17, and he goes, hey, do you remember me? And I'm like, no, again, no, not really. And he says, he goes, you came to my house before. And I'm like, I came to your house. And he's like, yeah. And he tells me how he was the kid that refused to put his pants on, was arguing with his dad. And he's like, you really made an impression on me that day. So, and I'm like, so are you doing well? He's like, yeah, I'm doing really well. I, I appreciate, you know, everything you said to me that day. That, like I said, stuff like that really make you feel good about yourself and know you picked the right profession. Exactly. And it's those little moments, like you said, it's not a moment like, oh, I jumped through a burning building to go rescue someone, brought them to safety, something like It's the little thing. You helped a grandmother on the side of the road who was just struggling with a simple car seat. Right. You helped, so you inspired someone to get dressed today, you know, <laughs> something that simple. A question that popped in my head recently, um, you mentioned earlier, like media depictions of police officers out of all the media that's out there today, like all the TV shows, which one do you think has the most accurate description of your career? Oh, I'm probably not the re- best person to answer <laughs> that question. I'm sorry to tell you. No, 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 I no. Don't no. Want, <laughs> I don't watch tell. I don't watch police shows when I'm off duty. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I live it 24 hours a day. So when mm-hmm. I'm, I'm home and I'm off, I try to unplug and just uh, tune in with my family. I don't really totally understand. Shows, yes. Totally understand, you know? Mm-hmm. So outside of police work, you know, you mentioned your family, man. What are your other hobbies? Um, I, I, do, I do a lot of charity work. I've, I've worked with the American Cancer Society. I worked with the NAACP before. Uh, I also, I'm the owner of uh, Trinity Karate in Erie. Mm. Um, and we are a, a full service uh, martial arts academy where we do kids karate, sport karate, kickboxing, MMA, things like that. Ooh, tell us more about that. <laughs> what would you like to know? I mean, I, uh, I've been studying martial arts uh, my whole life. And the, a few years back, probably, I don't know, 15, 16 years ago, they wanted policemen to work with inner city kids. And one of my friends worked at a community center and he asked if I would come in and teach a, teach a karate class to the kids at the community center. And my department allowed me to go in and do that because, like I said, we were trying to do more um, community policing and work more with the with the inner city kids. So I started teaching this class, and then it has evolved from, you know, a class once a week at a community center into a a full time martial arts school. Wonderful. Where can we learn more about that? If you go to tkoerie.com. tkoerie.com. And that brings up another question. Where can we learn more about Pennsylvania State Police? If you go to patrooper.com. Patrooper.com. Yes, patrooper.com. Or, I mean, if you're in the Erie area, all you have to do is call any of the barracks and ask to speak to the recruiter, and they'll transfer you to my uh, to my office. Wonderful. So now we got to make this an official buddy cast. I got two more questions for you before we end this episode. The first one is brought to us by my buddy, Jonas Kane at Hashtag Positivity. He wants to know, in your own words, what does it mean to be someone's buddy? What does it mean to be someone's buddy? I'm going to go back to my military uh, experience. And when I was in the military, you had a battle buddy. And that's your partner when you're out in combat. And that's why I always refer back. I would refer back to that when I think about a buddy. That's someone that's there for you. Someone that's always got your back. They, they've got your six. Um, you can trust them. You're, you know, it's just a, a loyal battle buddy and someone that, like I said, you're, you're going to be there for and like you can experience things with and grow with. That is, that's one of the best answers I have heard, a battle buddy. You're right. Someone that will always have your back, always be there for you. And now we've come to what we call the ultimate buddy cast buddy question. You ready for this one? Okay, go ahead. For anyone out there who dreams of being a police officer, whether it be a state police officer, whether it just be, you know, um, someone just helping the community. What's your advice to them? Um, anyone that wants to be a police officer, I would just tell them to, to uh, you know, follow your dreams and go for it. Um, the best thing, if you're, a, if you're a young person, you just want to do the right thing. Try to stay out of trouble. Try to stay away from people that get in trouble. Um, like I said, be active in the community. Be active and some type of uh exercise like i mean whether whether it be playing sports playing pickup basketball exercising yoga something just stay active 
And then, like I said, just follow your dreams. Just, just apply, and I'm sure you can do it. Nice. Quick follow up. Do you think, like, if someone grew up with sports, grew up with like a coach as a mentor or something, do you think, do you see that playing in your role in your role today? Absolutely. That's one of the questions I ask when I re- when I'm out recruiting. I ask them, "Have you ever played a an organized sport before?" Because if you're coachable, that means you're trainable within within the Pennsylvania State Police, that is a definite uh, asset to be able to, you know, to be a team player. Mm -hmm. Be a team player. Well, thank you so much, Officer Arrington, for stopping on BuddyCast today, where you're not a guest, you're a buddy. So you are an official BuddyCast, or you are official buddy of BuddyCast. So thank Thank you. you It It was a pleasure hearing about your career, learning what it takes to be a Pennsylvania State Police Officer, I hope there's someone watching this episode that tunes in, whether it be live or during the replay, that really just takes this episode to heart and you never know, reaches out to you. How can they reach out to you, by the way, if there's someone out there who really wants to be a Pennsylvania State Police Officer? Okay, again, like I said, you can go to patrooper.com, hit the recruiter tab, and you'll see Trooper Arrington on there as the Erie recruiter. Or you can call the Erie State Police Barracks, and that's 814-898-1641. 814 898-1641. Awesome. Well, thank you for being a buddy again on BuddyCast. And I got one favor to ask you before we end this episode. First off, stick around for a minute. We'll chat afterwards. But one favor to ask you, I ask this to all my buddies that come on the show. Whatever you do today, tomorrow, next week, next month, or even next year, please promise me you're going to go out and be someone's buddy. All right. I promise you I'll do that. Mm -hmm. For all my buddies out there, this is my buddy, Trooper Arrington. Please look him up, Pennsylvania State Police. I'm your host, Nick Sorensen. Thank you for joining us on another episode of everybody's favorite show, BuddyCast. Well, the days are going fast, buddy, buddy, we've got to make them last. Buddy, buddy, before they've all gone past, buddy, buddy, tune in to BuddyCast. Make it, buddy, here on BuddyCast.